This is a patch featuring the Tabor Chaotic Oscillator. There are a couple of strategies and tricks here that I want to document for myself and for anyone following along on this video. The first is some modulation from the Sport Modulator. Both of these channels are set in sample and hold mode. The bottom is being clocked by the pulse output on the Tabor. The top channel is being clocked by each complete cycle of the bottom channel. One thing that I love about the Sport Modulator is that the rate knob in sample and hold controls the maximum amount of change that you can have between two samples. Uh, instead of sampling a new value, it will move by a rate amount towards that new value. This means that you can control how much change you get on each shift and cycle. And because the top channel only changes whenever the bottom channel finishes a cycle, you can control how often the top channel changes by the rate of the bottom channel as well. These are going into the 1F and 1M inputs on the Tabor. The Tabor is running into the Excalibur dual filter, which is based on mutable instruments blades. I'm taking a positive and negative version of the output from the Tabor and running those into filter number one and filter number two, respectively. The combination when those filters are summed is the space between the two filters. The overlap between them is subtracted from the final output. This is a trick based on the way that Rob Hordyke's Twin Peak filter is constructed. And one of the really interesting things with this is that it means that when the filters are close together, you get a very narrow space, when they're wider apart, you get a wider space like a bandpass filter, but when you take one filter and move it past the cutoff of the other, you get a smooth crossing of the space between them. You get interesting results with either of these filters above the other filter for your final output.
Finally, while we're listening to the output of the filter, I'm also taking a copy of that final signal and running it into the loop tape delay. This delayed copy of the output that we're listening to is run through an attenuator offset and into the power starve input of the Tabor. The result is that we can modulate the Tabor and control its level and the uh, operation of all of its oscillators based on a delayed version of the output of the Tabor. This creates really interesting lag-based feedback patterns that we can control the amount of, as well as the overall offset level for the power on the Tabor.